and welcome, I'm your Code McKean, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launched in December 24. This is another great month, despite the fact that there weren't that many releases during the holidays. There's a lot of variety as usual. There's action games, strategy games, some simulation games, rage games, and a bunch more. All in various styles, from pixel art to stylized to realistic. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so they'll list in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Also, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on in the industry, check out my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is a free newsletter where I cover the latest Game Dev news and any interesting articles that I come across. Things like a really awesome free VFX Unity ebook. I also wrote about how a janky game made $28 million. Or how much money do Steam developers actually keep? And I also write about some fun topics, like this trend where developers were posting their before and after, showing a really impressive result. So if you want to stay up to date, sign up for free with the link in the description. Alright, so starting off at number 10, with yet another very successful rage game, it's called Get to Work. You play as a guy in a business suit wearing rollerblades on the knees. The controls are very tricky and require perfect control to land all the jumps. As usual with rage games, if you fall down, you fall quite a lot and have to repeat a big section. This is definitely not my kind of genre, but the big important takeaway for me is who exactly made this game. This is the perfect streamer bait game and it was actually made by streamers. It was published or funded by Atrioc, a very big streamer on both YouTube and Twitch. It was developed by Easto Inc, the developers behind Atrio the Dark Wild, and they also have a very successful YouTube channel. This also features voice acting by Seadog VA, Ludwig, Doug Doug, Point Crow, and more. I've been wondering when this sort of thing was going to become more common, meaning streamers making and promoting their own games, since they already have a preset audience that might help them find success without as much effort in marketing. There have been a few attempts, and this one seems like to be a very successful one. Despite being a streamer game, it actually looks like a genuinely good game. It is not just a throwaway project, currently has over 900 very positive reviews. So if you like rage games, definitely give this a try. And if you follow streamers, you've probably already seen this one being played. Then here's the biggest hit of this month, it's called Meside. This is an insane hit, already likely sold over 1.5 million copies for perhaps about 22 million dollars, that's insane. This is a cute horror game, so it looks very cute. You play as an anime girl, there is also a game inside the game, it's a cute and cozy and life sim game. Walk around, do some tasks and cook some food, but then comes a twist. All of a sudden, you the player get pulled inside the game, so your imaginary girlfriend is now obsessed with you. And if you fail to reciprocate the same feelings, now it becomes a horror game and you have to run away from a very creepy anime girl holding a very sharp knife. It's got lots of glitch effects, some very spooky atmosphere, very dark, red and terrifying. Visual the game looks really great, perfect anime aesthetic, also really nice first person animations. The store page also says this game is very intense and not recommended for those with weak hearts. So yep, a very interesting game and people clearly love it. Like I said, this one is already a huge hit, over 40,000 reviews and they are 98% positive, that's a near perfect score. So if the concept intrigues you, definitely give this a try. Then for some insanely fast paced old school action, here is Bloodshed. This one perfectly captures those old school shooter vibes, you've got nice to the sprites in a 3D world, there are tons of demons all over the place, and you have all kinds of weapons to dispose of them. Obviously you've got a massive shotgun, but then you also have a staff that fires spells, there's a nice Uzi, some shurikens, and tons more. The description calls it a first person vampire survivors like roguelike, that's definitely an interesting twist, although I'm not entirely sure what that means. It looks like a first person shooter with just tons of enemies, you aim and shoot manually, so the attacks are not automatic like vampire survivors, but it does have multiple characters, each with their own weapons. And you do have some meta upgrades that do persist throughout each run. So it does have some nice survivors likes elements. And visually, I think this one looks great. Personally, I love the retro 2D sprites. It has just come out in early access, and so far the response is actually pretty good. Almost 200 very positive reviews. Next for some VR, here we have Iron Rebellion. Jump on your cockpit and control this giant battle mech. Stomp all over the battlefield, wielding some huge guns and shooting everything that moves. This one looks super intense. You have control over all the switches. You can physically interact with your support system and navigation in order to make sure you stay alive. But despite being some huge machines, they are not unwieldy. They're actually quite agile, quite fast. The physicality of all the buttons looks really cool. This is one that must feel really great to play in VR. The joystick perfectly controls the weapon outside, so it all perfectly matches. You've got lots of base mechs to choose from, and then you can customize them in many ways. Swap out all kinds of parts, all kinds of weapons, really customize them in your own way. The only downside seems to be that it's online only, but at least with this release, it should 
have a nice player base, at least for a while. That's always the big problem, the big potential issue with indie multiplayer games. This one has just hit 1.0 and this seems to be one of the biggest VR hits I've seen. It has got 400 very positive reviews. In terms of VR games, that is a very good result. Next for some fast paced sci-fi FPS action, here we have Battle Shapers. This is a very action packed game with tons of weapons, skills, enemies and lots of robotic mayhem. The main selling point is really the variety of skills and all the weapons at your disposal. They are all highly customizable so you can make your own very unique build. It also encourages strategic thinking instead of really just going guns blazing. So you place your own traps, use some power ups to gain the upper hand when battling a bunch of very tough overlord. Then as you improve your skills and upgrade your arsenal, those bosses they just get tougher and tougher. If you die, just get up and try again. Try to reach the end in this sci-fi RPG roguelite. This one has just graduated after spending a bit over one year in early access. Currently has almost 600 very positive reviews, so if you want to shoot some robots, give this a try. Then if you want to play some horror with friends, here is Zort. This is an action-adventure horror game. Join your friends and explore various maps where you try to escape from various twisted creatures. You must collect some items, overcome the creatures and reach the end without dying. There is also a sanity system. You need to keep your mental health up, otherwise you go crazy. The map also changes, so things are different every time you play. And different creatures, those also involve different mechanics, so you need to be clever and pay attention to the environment in order to figure out how to defeat or avoid them. The game includes proximity voice chat, so you can hear all your friends scream in terror. It also has some voice filters that change based on the atmosphere. That sounds like a really fun mechanic. You can play either solo or with up to four people in co-op. It is out now in early access and already has over 2,000 very positive reviews. So if you like these kinds of games, then this one seems like a great new one. Next, if you want an interesting pixel bullet hell roguelike, look at Talented. This one has a really interesting setup. You play as a character in the middle of a crossroads. Enemies come from all sides, so up, down, left, right, and you have to take them down. One core feature of this game is really the randomly generated skill trees, or rather talent trees. The tree is absolutely massive, like really, really giant, literally containing hundreds of different talents, and it's also completely different each time. Traversing the tree itself sounds like it's a fun mechanic. Just by the nature of the talents being all very different, that makes every run very, very different. It really is the kind of game where every run is indeed very unique. You craft your own builds out of over 500 talents you can learn, then take out all your foes using over 100 abilities. On top of all this, you have have six classes, each with their own distinct playstyle. I quite like the randomness of the skill tree, and I quite like the presentation of this one, with the four lanes coming up to the crossroad. It seems simultaneously a simple game, but one with a lot of depth. It seems that people are really enjoying it, with almost 600 very positive reviews. Next here is a game set in Poland in the 90s. It's called OHV. Apparently OHV means off-highway vehicle, so apparently it's something meant to go off-road. Personally, I did not know this term, I've never seen it. In this game, you build and maintain your buggy. So grab some pipes and some mold-used parts, pick up your tools and start building your buggy. You can slice the pipes to get the right size, you can weld them together to get them in place, attach some wheels and really build your car. Then you can apparently also take a normal car, like an old Renault, you can take it and fix it up. The game seems quite janky. It is definitely one of those simulator games. You're in first person, picking up and using all sorts of tools. According to the description, you can even lift some weights and take part in a weightlifting contest. Then you can also buy some clothes from the street market. You can make pickled cucumbers and cut off some catalytic converters. The entire game seems quite strange, but apparently that strangeness does appeal to a bunch of people. It seems to be a solo Polish dev and is also appealing to the Polish community. It already has almost 400 very positive reviews and is being worked on whilst in early access, so definitely a strange unique one, I'm quite curious to see how this one will develop over time. Next here we have one that has been in early access for literally over 10 years and just hit 1.0, it's Caves of Cud. This one is a giant sandbox with extreme detail in everything from the super complex character creator that has over 70 mutations, to the world itself where you can interact with in pretty much any way you can think of. For example, if you find a locked door, you can look for a key, or you can punch through a wall, or you can use a skill to look at the behind the door, or use a teleport skill to teleport to the other side. The game is really all about simulation on every aspect, allowing you to do pretty much anything you can think of. So this game seems something like Dwarf Fortress, but you control a single character instead of controlling an army of dwarves. Like I said, the simulation is insanely deep. On a new game, it generates an entire vast world. It also generates the history of that world, generates the entire open world from the giant over map down to the individual dungeons and all the locations you can play. This is very much a game for people who like super deep, rich 
sufficiently detailed experiences. You can instantly tell by the visuals who this appeals to. I'm gonna say that for me this sounds just like Dwarf Fortress, meaning it sounds really awesome, but I don't think I have the time to really learn how to play it. But if you do, then you're bound to get a really excellent experience. After 17 years in development, this one has finally hit 1.0. In total, it has almost 9,000 reviews at 95% positive, so yep, that's another near perfect score. And at number one, for my personal pick of the month, here is one that honestly is sort of a game idea that I've had in my head for the longest time. This one is called Grid Road. This is really very close to an idea that I've wanted to make for ages. At some point, I want to make a traffic management game, something where you place down traffic lights and define the exact timings with the goal to make the traffic flow really perfectly. I've wanted to make that game idea for ages and this game seems quite similar to that. Like the name implies, you have roads on a grid, then it's up to you to place down roads with directions and traffic lights in order to make sure the traffic flows smoothly. The game looks very simplistic, very cool. You've got a nice minimalist interface, you can see the entire map at once and place down roads. It starts off simple, just one lane trying to get from point A to point B, but soon enough you are managing four lane highways with each car wanting to go in all sorts of different directions. So you need to add some traffic lights, manage the timing, take care not to cause some massive pileups and make sure the traffic runs smoothly. Cars come from all over the place, but then cars of each color they want to go to one specific exit. This also seems to be a deterministic game. There is a high score visible at all times so you can try to make the best you can and perhaps you can even beat the developer. The only thing I'm not sure about is if the game has some sort of meta progression, like do you unlock more tools, more road types or is it all just level based? Personally if I ever do make that idea that I've had in my head for ages, if I do it will definitely be less puzzle like than this one, but still I love how this one looks and I'd love to try it. This game has just had a full launch after one year of early access, people seem to really like it with 200 very positive reviews. Alright so that's 10 awesome new games made with DNT launched in December 24. I hope this list helps you see how DNT engine is capable of building anything, the only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game Dinky Gardens and I hope you enjoy playing it.